Hi, this is Andrew Leszczynski. Welcome to another episode of Gun TV PL. Behind me, you can see a very nice dynamic shooting range. Our previous clip about sport dynamic shooting has been seen by over 90,000 people, and you liked it very much. Why? What actually is sport shooting? It's a form of contact with history, gun culture, adrenaline, fun, and meeting people, and also a test of our skills. But it may happen very soon that a new European directive will be launched. A directive totally prohibiting all semi-automatic guns in the European Union. This may be the end of all shooting sports across the EU. It all began on the 13th of November 2015 after the terrorist attack in Paris. 130 people were killed that day. What has been revealed as a consequence of investigations into that case? It is extremely important that terrorists used illegal, unregistered guns. Where did these guns come from? The firearms used by the terrorists on the 13th of November 2015 in Paris were produced in former Yugoslavia for the army of that country and were never registered on the legal civilian market. The manufacturing plant was situated in the city of Kragujevac. This has been confirmed by the CEO of the factory, Milojko Bzakovic. Two days after the attacks in Paris, the Serbian Ministry of Internal Affairs sent the serial numbers of firearms found in the French capital during and straight after the attacks. I think that there were seven, maybe eight, automatic Kalashnikovs, CEO Bzakovic says. These were Yugoslavian versions of Russian automatic AK-47 assault rifles. The firearms found in Paris were produced in the late 1980s and went to the former Yugoslavian army's depository. It's almost certain that these guns found their way onto the black market because of the war in former Yugoslavia in the 1990s. That also means that the firearms used by the terrorists have never been present on any legal civilian market. What of the European commissioners, under the influence of Polish Commissioner Elżbieta Bienkowska, decided to do about all of that? To turn against legal gun owners in Europe and disarm the whole of Europe itself. One of the paragraphs in the project of a new version of Directive 91-477 goes like this. Stricter rules should be implemented in the gun law to ban certain semi-automatic firearms, which will not, under any circumstance, be allowed to be held by private persons. And what is a semi-automatic gun? This was explained very precisely in our first clip entitled EU Gun Ban that was published shortly after the terrorist attack in Paris in November 2015. I don't know about you, but I see a big red light flashing somewhere deep in my mind. Because how can it be? Terrorists are coming to our home, killing people using illegal guns, and as an answer to that, the European Commission is disarming legal gun owners in Europe. It's a semi-automatic gun, which means firing one round with one trigger pull until the magazine is empty, compared to a shotgun, dangerous in any way. Is it possible that the gun can shoot by itself? Well, guns do not have brains, muscles or any power to make a decision. It's always the man that is shooting, never the gun itself. Well, it's not a completely new idea. Let's go back to January 1997 and Great Britain. All firearms on the civilian market were banned. There was a 200% increase in violent crime. But was it just civilians who were castrated from legal gun ownership? You may not know, but even the British police are not equipped with all the necessary gear, besides batons and electric teasers. And how does it work in practice? Just watch. And how do you like watching British officers armed with commanding voice and pepper spray? Well, personally, I feel sorry for them. We're all intelligent people who can analyze and interpret the facts, right? What do you think when, after the terrorist attacks, the European Commission is trying to disarm Europe? Well, that as a result of terrorist attacks, the victims will be punished, not the aggressors. So what are you entitled to think when seeing all of this? That the European Commission wants to make Europe a soft target, as it is called. It's all about creating a situation when guns will be owned only by terrorists and gangsters, because even the police in some countries are already disarmed. 
we decided to write down some of the possible conclusions you are entitled to point out when seeing what the EU Commission is doing after terrorist attacks. It's a violation of our rights to possess and to be free. It's destroying artifacts of history and human technical achievements, which is all our legacy. It's also destroying the natural defensive skills of whole societies and destroying something that is called a sense of self-preservation. In the same manner as the European Commission, communist and Nazi dictators were thinking, wanting to control weak, disarmed and legally incapacitated nations. I really don't want to scare you, but watching all of this, there's only one conclusion. That's how all totalitarian regimes have begun. The European Commission has no evidence, but it does have a target. They want to destroy nations' independence and freedom. Which is, of course, a great deal for all the terrorists and gangsters. Their victims are disarming by themselves. What's more, maybe in an act of despair, Polish Commissioner Elżbieta Bienkowska is telling lies, saying that all those new implementations to Directive 91-477 were deeply consulted with Polish sports shooters and the Polish organization Firearms United. Well, they were not, which was strongly underlined in an official statement by the Firearms United organization. The European Commission is behaving in an underhand manner, using this sort of manipulation to achieve its own goals without democratic forms of control. The right to possess is the right of free people. If you don't have the right to possess, you are just a slave, not a member of a democratic European community. Terrorists have guns. They had guns before, and they will have them, no matter what intelligent rules we're about to implement under European law. Everyone who, in the current geopolitical situation, acts to limit the rights of legal gun possession and ownership, paradoxically supports international terrorism. And what do the safe, wealthy people of Switzerland say about all this? 47 guns per 100 citizens. Switzerland's government encourages their own citizens to buy more guns and ammunition. Today, the European Commission wants to take away your rights to possess guns. But how about tomorrow? Maybe they'll take your car or home for someone else, in the name of the greater good. What sort of thinking is this? It's all about punishing the victims for the acts of terror, like punishing a woman because she was raped. And that's how Brussels becomes the center of European terrorism. And how about Belgium? How is it possible to tolerate whole separate districts in your own city, packed with foreigners, where even the police have no access? That's exactly how modern terrorism and religious fanaticism is born. If you come to my home, you are just a visitor, and you accept all the rules I have set. You are not allowed to conspire against me in my own home, closed in a separate room. Let's get back to our own playground for a while. There is no education at school concerning modern imminent political dangers. And at the other side of our eastern borders, in Russia, we now have United States number two, a free, no licenses gun market in a country where, because of Tsarist and communist governments, in fact, there was no gun culture in history. What are we entitled to think watching what the European Commission is doing? That we, legal gun owners, are treated equally with terrorists and gangsters, and that taking away our legally possessed guns will reduce the number of terrorist attacks. Well, unfortunately, it's going to be just the opposite, because these actions do not take illegal guns from terrorists. I wonder if the EU Commission did proper economical calculations on implementing this semi-automatic firearm gun ban for civilians in Europe. We are talking here about tens of thousands of people working in the gun market, sports shooting range crews, shooting instructors, gun, ammo and accessories manufacturers. All these jobs may be lost. Only a very weak government that has no democratic support is afraid of guns in the hands of law-abiding citizens in legal possession of them. Dear European Commissioners, you've been laughed at by Swedes, Czechs and Finns. We, the Polish people, won't let you make us dilettantes, not being able to operate guns properly. We will fight to preserve our history and identity. At the end, I reach to Stepan Twardok's book called Playing with Guns, where we can find a great summary of this episode of Gun TV. In the tradition of free and brave nations, guns are equally 
a symbol and also a factual guarantee of freedom and equality for those who possess guns, and also whole armed nations. It was no mistake that Adolf Hitler left Switzerland alone during World War II. In this beautiful Alpine land, a rifle is present in every home. It used to be like that in Sarmatian Poland once. We were disarmed afterwards by invaders and communists. Did Polish people resign from this personal freedom that once made them great? Do Polish people deliberately choose a role of defenseless victims for themselves? Do Polish people not want to take responsibility for their loved ones and their country? It also reminds us that, as Tolkien's Eowyn warns, even those who don't live by the sword may die by the sword. Thank you for watching. See you next time.